guys it's Jen welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video it is early and it is time for coffee but I thought I would take you along with me today on a what I eat in a day vlog style type video uh, but first yes we have to have coffee that is the start of every day and what I drink and eat okay so I'm really excited to try this coffee that I got yesterday in the mail. It is Huckleberry Roasters from Denver, Colorado. I mean, it smells really good, but also I really like the colorful bag. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put some in my little reusable K cup here and brew one cup. What Murphy eats in a day? A dental treat. All right, so I went upstairs, got myself ready, got the kids off to school. Adam is actually at work today. He's already left a long time ago. So I have about 20 minutes before I need to start working for the day. So I have just enough time to make myself breakfast. A lot of times I don't eat this early in the morning, but I'm feeling hungry this morning. And I always have to look at my schedule because I frequently have like back to back to back webinars, conference calls, meetings, that kind of thing. And so I kind of try to plan out if I'm going to, like when I'm going to eat, I know it sounds weird, but it's like the worst thing is being stuck on a three-hour webinar and you can't get up and get something to eat so I think I'm gonna do a savory breakfast today I haven't made one of these in a long time uh, if I have some ham in the fridge which I think I do I think I'm gonna do like a wheat English muffin with an egg and some ham and some cheese oh my gosh so Adam ate all the ham <laughs> I'm like no he must have made a sandwich with it for lunch or something the other day so anyway these uh we're gonna we're gonna improvise these are the english muffins i have there the thomas whole wheat english muffins i really really like them they have more fiber than the original ones so i'm just gonna pop this in the toaster for the egg i'm gonna use this little sistema microwave egg cooker and whenever i share this i always get comments that people think that it's super weird <laughs> to cook an egg in the microwave, but it works perfectly. So all I do is I just break it in there and then I use the shell to just poke the yolk. You could just you could just leave the yolk whole if you want to undercook it and do some runny yolk. I don't really care for that, but so I put a little bit of salt in, you can put pepper or whatever, and then you just close the lid, make sure it's vented, and then you put this in the microwave for about 40 seconds. Okay, so I don't have any ham, so I dug around in the freezer and found a sausage patty uh, left in one of the bags that we had in there that's like, there was like two left in the bag, so I'm gonna use uh, this last one. Or not this last one, I'm gonna use one of the last ones that I found. Okay, so with my breakfast, a sandwich I'm gonna peel one of these sumo oranges if you guys can get your hands on these they are so good I think they're only available for like four months out of the year they don't have any seeds in them they're easy to peel and they're super sweet and I've been trying to make myself eat more fruit I'm not a fruit person like I know that sounds weird but I would rather eat veggies instead of fruit my kids love these too they're kind of pricey but since they're only available for a couple of months a year, it's like, oh well. Okay, so I got my English muffin here. I'm gonna put my egg down. The best part about this little cooker too is that it makes it perfectly circle. <laughs> and then I have one piece left of this Cracker Barrel California smoked provolone. So fun fact, uh, my friend Shannon messaged me on Instagram. Well, she wasn't always my friend, but I'm calling her my friend now. And said that she was one of the food scientists that helped make this. If you ever find this cheese, it is so freaking good. It's Cracker Barrel Black Ribbon Slices California Smoked Provolone. So shout out to Shannon for helping make such a delicious cheese. Uh, I'm definitely going to purchase that again. So I'm going to put this unappetizing looking sausage patty on here. And then the heat obviously will help melt the cheese. All right, here is my breakfast. I'm kind of thinking this sausage may have been turkey sausage because it's super lean and I just had it in a bag, like a Ziploc bag, it wasn't labeled or anything. So lesson learned kids, label your your freezer bag so you know what's in it. Okay, so the other thing that I'm gonna grab before I go upstairs and get on my three and a half hours long of, of calls and webinars is I'm gonna take a Built Bar with me. They are actually sponsoring today's video. I've been working with them for several months now and you guys have messaged me letting me know on Instagram that you have bought their bars and you love them too. They have a ton of different flavors and all of their flavors are, they taste to me more like a treat than a protein bar, which is fantastic because you guys know there are some pretty crappy tasting protein bars out there, but these are definitely delicious. So this is gonna be the perfect 
perfect snack for me mid-morning uh, before I can get back down to make myself some lunch. It satisfies my sweet tooth, but also helps fill me up because of the protein. The macros on these are really good if that's something that you're concerned about. They're high in protein, low in sugar, and this one's only 160 calories. And this flavor is one of my favorite. It's the lemon almond cheesecake. I also just saw an ad on Facebook this morning, which was so random, that they have a new like white chocolate raspberry flavor. So I'm like, oh my God, I need to check that out <laughs> before it sells out. So I don't know if it's gonna be available when you guys are watching this video, but I think I'm gonna get online later tonight and see if I can find that one. But definitely you guys check out Built Bar. Uh, if you want to use my link in the description box below, I also have a coupon code that can save you some money on your first order. If you haven't ordered before and you're not sure which flavor that you like, I would just recommend getting the variety box. That way you can try all of them, decide what you like, and then if you wanna order uh, a different flavor going forward, you definitely can. But I'm so glad that I've been able to partner with Built Bar because I actually ordered their bars even before I partnered with them here on YouTube, and I'm excited to be able to bring you guys this deal as well. Okay, so I'm gonna take my breakfast, my Built Bar, I have water upstairs, I have coffee upstairs, and I think I'm set for the morning. I'll see you guys back when it's time to make lunch. All right, it's one o'clock, and I'm just now getting a chance to get lunch, and I'm absolutely starving. <laughs> I did have my belt bar though, and I have to say that lemon almond cheesecake is delicious. So I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. We'll see how much comes out. So I heated up some chili. This is just leftovers. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of cheese on it. And then I also have some sour cream. Do you guys put sour cream on your chili? Adam thinks it's ridiculous. And then I'm gonna add some cilantro. And I'm gonna eat this. I'm maybe gonna get some crackers or some tortilla chips. And then I also have a uh, Pepsi Zero Sugar. Okay, so. So it is time to make dinner and what I'm going to make tonight is a recipe out of this America's Test Kitchen meal prep cookbook that I got. Uh, I can link this down below. I love all of America's Test Kitchen cookbook but this is the chicken with spring vegetables, capers, and lemon. So the intent of this cookbook is to be used as a meal prep cookbook but it's also written that you can make the recipes individually. So what I'm going to need is olive oil, salt and pepper, some parsley, shallot, uh, lemon juice, and garlic. That's for the marinade slash dressing for the recipe. And then the chicken is actually bone in chicken breast. I get this from Thrive Market. It's really good. So uh, it's going to take probably about an hour to roast. It's about 4.30 now. That's why I'm starting dinner early. And then the veggies that are going to roast with it is um, are some artichokes, some asparagus, some tomatoes, and I have some caper as well. So let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna make the dressing slash marinade in the food processor. So I'm gonna put in parsley, shallot, cloves of garlic, and then I'm gonna squeeze in some lemon juice, and then about a quarter teaspoon of pepper, and one teaspoon of salt. And we're gonna do one half cup of olive oil. Okay, I did thin this out with just a little bit of water so it would be more of like a dressing consistency rather than a paste. But I'm gonna set aside a couple tablespoons of this because we will use it to drizzle over at the end. All right, so I've got a 13 by nine baking dish and I'm gonna put in my artichokes. Most of these tomatoes, I just need eight ounces, so I'm not gonna use quite the whole container. And then I have some capers that I rinsed, uh, which is what the recipe called for. So I'm gonna put those in, about a quarter of a cup. And then I'm also gonna slice up a lemon. And then the asparagus, it says to put in later because it can burn. So I'm just gonna pour in a little bit of the marinade. All right, so I'm gonna give this a stir. Okay, so I've got the four chicken, bone-in chicken breasts, and then I'm just gonna pour over the rest of the marinade, and then kind of rub that in. I'm gonna try and put some of the lemons on top of the chicken so it can have a little bit more flavor when it roasts. This just looks so like fresh and springy, doesn't it? heavy. All right, I'm gonna stick this in the oven. I have the oven preheated to 450. 
and I'm gonna cook this for about 50 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to wash up some fruit. I have some grapes and strawberries in here, and then I'm also going to take care of these dishes real quick. Okay, so this has been in the oven for 50 minutes, and the chicken is done, so I'm gonna remove it to um, like a platter and cover it with foil, and then I'm gonna put the asparagus in and put that back in the oven to roast. All right, so I cut a bunch of asparagus in half and just put it back in the pan and kind of toss it around with the juices a little bit. So I'm gonna do this for about 15 minutes and we'll see if it's done. Okay, so I'm kind of just making this up, but I have uh, some couscous here that I'm gonna make with the chicken and the veggies. Um, I think there's about one, looks like there's about one cup in here. So I have about a cup and a half of water in this pot here with uh, maybe about a tablespoon of butter. There's a bouillon cube in there, I think. This is either a veggie or a chicken bouillon cube, I'm not sure, because I just had it in my cupboard and it wasn't labeled. Um, and I also have a little bit of salt in there and some garlic powder. So once that comes to a boil, I'll stir the couscous in, turn off the heat, let it sit for about five minutes and I'll probably stir in a little bit of Parmesan cheese. All right, so this is boiling now. I'm just making sure that the, um, well, that stock cube is broken up. Turn off the heat, pour in the couscous, and then you just want to stir this to make sure all of the couscous is covered with the liquid and put the lid on and wait for about five or ten minutes. Okay, when the couscous is done, you can just fluff it up a little bit and then I'm gonna taste it and see if it needs any salt or anything. Okay, here's the chicken that has been roasting and then I have the additional dressing right there and then the veggies turned out so good. Um, I tasted some of the asparagus and it's perfect. All right, so here is completed dinner. I did go ahead and take my chicken off the bone just so you could see how it looks and put some of the um, dressing over it. It turned out really good, super moist. I have not been cooking chicken breast on the bone for quite a long time until I got this box from um, Thrive Market, so I would recommend the chicken on the bone roasting in the oven. It's delicious. Then I have the couscous and the veggies with the capers and uh, asparagus, tomatoes, etc. Okay, so dinner was delicious, but I'm gonna take a little bit of time right now to prep some of my produce. Normally, I try to do this on the weekends. You guys know that, but this weekend I sort of ran out of time, and so when that happens, I like to just get it done so that uh, if I have produce that's prepped, we are much more likely to. To use it. So I had a couple bunches of kale that I wanted to get washed. Uh, one was a little bit limp and so a tip for that is if you soak it in really cold water it will not only rinse it off or wash it, it will also kind of revive <laughs> the kale a little bit. Uh, if you guys have a good recipe for kale salad I would love to hear it down below. I have a couple that I've used over the years but I'm always looking for something new. Cheesecake Factory have like a good kale salad. I'll have to look. We don't have a Cheesecake Factory around here so I I have literally been there like once or twice in my whole entire life, but I feel like there's something like that. This is some romaine that I wanted to get washed up. I like to wash this and leave the leaves whole so that I can either chop them up for salads or use them whole on sandwiches. I like to soak my lettuce in a little bit of lemon juice and super cold water. That helps to prevent the romaine from browning and it also helps hydrate it. Uh, this romaine was a little bit limp as well. I'm kind of thinking about maybe making a Caesar salad with some of the kale and romaine this week, so I'll have to see if that happens. But I am layering my romaine in a um, veggie container here just to make sure that it stays dry. I put some paper towels in between the layers, and now I have some bok choy that I'm gonna get cut up and washed. I think I'm going to use this for a salad as well, so I decided to rinse it and leave the leaves whole on that also so I can decide what to do it do with it later and then last was some cilantro that was looking a little bit sad so I soaked that and washed it and got that done for the night. Okay so while I've been washing all of my produce I did have one of these true limeade uh, water enhancers. It says, it always says to mix it with 16 ounces of water, but I find that that's too sweet, so I usually mix it with like 24. So I have berries and grapes, what's left of it anyway, from tonight, but I was happy to get most of the things, um, you know, washed up and taken care of that I wanted to. There's my lettuce and bok choy in there. We've got leftover chili for lunch tomorrow, and I also washed up my kale. Um, there's some arugula in there, some orzo salad. I'll probably eat that for lunch. 
later this week and the broccoli that I washed up. So that was the main thing that I wanted to get done tonight since I didn't get it done this weekend. And I was thinking about having these for lunch today too, but I have the chili instead as you saw. However, if you see these, they're really, really good. Sometimes they're either in the refrigerated or the freezer section, but they're super good in the air fryer and you can have them with like some um, hummus in a wrap or on a salad with like Greek dressing and tzatziki sauce. It's so good. And this was the chicken that we had um, left over from tonight. I just pulled it off the bone. So this will be good in a salad or I can even make like chicken salad out of it or something like that. All right, so it is, about 9 p.m. and I am going to have some popcorn for bedtime snacks. I haven't had some for a while. Hey guys, good morning. So when I left you last night, I was making popcorn. <laughs> And Adam and I went down into the basement and watched TV for a little bit before we went to bed. Well, basically he watched TV and I messed around <laughs> on my phone. But I had that popcorn and then I also had one of those lower sugar uh, peanut butter. I think they're like the Unreal brand of peanut butter cup. They're similar to the Lilies, but they are, um, they're a different brand, obviously. I think I got them from Imperfect Foods. Anyway, really good. So that is what I eat in a day. Sometimes when I post these videos, I get, obviously I get, you know, comments and questions and and stuff about like am I counting calories I, I mean I do get I do get comments too like you eat too much <laughs> you know, so on and so forth. Uh, I don't really think that anyone should be policing anyone else on their body or their diet. I have feelings about that, but this is a pretty normal day for me. There are days when I eat more healthy and days when I eat less healthy. The main thing that I'm focusing on right now is limiting my sugars and trying to get some sort of movement in every single day. Now, yesterday I didn't, but this morning I woke up and did yoga and I'll probably take a walk during my lunch break. So in the end, a day is just a day and a lot of it balances out but one of the things I also wanted to chat about briefly is just like the pervasiveness of diet culture in our society and I sort of feel like we're getting a little bit better about that as time goes on but when I was in high school in the late 90s uh, there was a lot of that going on and I as a normal sized person in high school uh, I was never super thin but I wasn't overweight either I was probably a size 12 <laughs> 12 13 14 you know something like that but I always felt like I was so fat always 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 and part of that is you know I had a stepfather that used to say things about my body that were not appropriate and things like that but you know in the late 90s the um, low carb craze was sort of like at its peak I mean we're going through the keto thing now but when I grew up in high school the first diet well I think the, fir the first thing that I ever tried to do to lose weight was take Dexatrim. And the fact that I did that when I was a teenager now is like concerning to me. Um, and I think if my, if I found out that my daughter was doing that, I would just be so like worried and hurt for her. But that, this was back when Dexatrim used to be uh, like, it, it was different. I, I don't know exactly what the active medication in it was, but it was sort of like a legal version of speed. Like you would take it and you would legitimately not be hungry like you would be hopped up not like not like high or whatever but you just have like a lot of energy and you wouldn't be hungry and so I took that for a long time and I lost some weight and then I was um, with a boyfriend in high school and while I was dating him I gained some weight and then he broke up with me and after that I was super like oh depressed you know everything not like clinically depressed but like you know high school <laughs> high school emotions uh, and so that was the first time I ever put myself on like a diet diet and I did Atkins and and I severely restricted my carb for probably a good like five to six months. I'm not kidding you. I was obsessive about it. I did not eat one bite of bread, one spoonful of ice cream, nothing. Like I was, I was eating meat and cheese, like very minimal vegetables, <laughs> no fruit, Atkins bars uh, for like six months. And I'll tell you what, I lost a bunch of weight. I was like thin. I was rocking a bikini. Not that I couldn't have rocked a bikini in a size 12, like what am I thinking you know um but uh that was the first time when I really like restricted my food and went on a diet and then after that probably from the time I turned 18 until after well after I was 30 it was this constant how can I lose weight what diet can I be on what can I do how you know like and I just have to tell you and some of you probably know that this is true too that 
it is exhausting to literally wake up every day feeling like your body is not worthy feeling like you need to lose weight feeling guilty for every single bite you put in your mouth if it's not a chicken breast or a carrot that is a hard way to live like it's not a hard like not hard in the sense that like it's a hardship but like it that sh is exhausting it's exhausting and so probably it wasn't until after I turned 30 probably in my like early 30s where I finally came to peace with food and I would say even a couple years ago when I started YouTube I was still cycling on and off the keto thing and blah 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 and now I don't really follow any type of diet I try to eat as balanced of a diet as I can while still incorporating you know fruit and vegetables and things like that and obviously right now I'm sort of invested in reducing our family's sugar intake but the sense of freedom that I have now about food is worth everything even if I am a bit overweight the mental uh, load that has been taken off me that I don't worry about that stuff anymore is so freeing <laughs> Like, and I can't exactly explain explain what happened. I think it's a combination of getting older. I did have weight loss surgery when I was in my early 30s and I think that that taught me a lot about how to eat normal sized portions. And so I don't know you know, I guess I don't have answers for people that, you know, try to restrict their eating or worry about every single bite they put into their mouth, but I would encourage you to work on that maybe with a therapist or something if that's something that you um, are concerned about because when you can't enjoy your life because you're either A, worrying about how your body looks or B, worrying about what you put in your mouth, it's just, it sucks, man. <laughs> it sucks and I've been there. Um, I follow a couple women on TikTok who are sort of like intuitive eating coaches and I don't really follow like intuitive eating or anything like that but some of the advice they put out there and Abby Sharp is another good one too um you know obviously I think there's like a line between like fat acceptance and what's like unhealthy you know being like super super overweight and unhealthy versus you know restriction I mean there's like there has to be like a middle ground right um but your mental health matters too just as much as your physical health and I think that's one thing that as humans we don't see when we judge other people's bodies so yeah I don't know if any of this <laughs> <laughs> made sense but I just wanted to talk about that for a little bit and another good person to watch I would recommend is Erin Branscombe she also had weight loss surgery but even if you haven't had weight loss surgery and you just want someone to kind of give you inspiration for like meal prep and how to eat intuitively and just to be like cool about it she's another good one to follow so anyway I just wanted to add this in at the end there because you know any, I mean anytime you share anything personal about yourself whether it's like you know money you spend what you eat whatever you're gonna you're gonna get judgment and I <laughs> I understand that but I also firmly believe that there's not one perfect diet for everyone you know and some people do really great on Weight Watchers and some people do really great on keto and other people cycle on and off and they can't you know and so it's it's all about what works what works for you and I'm in the headspace right now where I want to enjoy food but I also want to teach myself to enjoy and look forward to moving my body um, I think I need to do a lot better about prioritizing that and I'm the first one uh, to admit it but the sense of freedom that I have had over the past you know year or so a couple years about not worrying about every single bite of food that goes into my mouth is so freeing like I can remember one of my times when I was cycling on and off low carb um, um, I accidentally, this was when I was, uh, I worked as a CNA in a nursing home and I accidentally ate a handful of popcorn at the nurse's station. Like not even consciously, like I just walked up to like sit down after I was done taking care of a patient and there was like, I don't remember what they're, yes, we were eating at the nurse's station. I'm sure joint commission would not like that, but, <laughs> but, but I like, I, I ate a handful of popcorn and I just remember feeling so guilty about it for like the rest of the day because I ate popcorn. Carbs. What kind of life? <laughs> what kind of life is that? I just can't. I can't. Oh God. Anyway, I hope uh, some of you this resonated with. I'm sure it did. I know that there are a lot of us out there, especially women, not just women, men too, who you know grew up around diet culture and grew up that you know thin is the only thing that's beautiful, and we have to restrict uh, our eating to you know be a beautiful woman and all of this stuff. But anyway, that is all I have to say about that. But legitimately, don't forget to check out Built Bar because they have awesome products and it is 
one thing, you know, I say, there are some times when I say it in my videos, like, oh, you can eat this without feeling guilty. I probably shouldn't say that because I don't, that's another thing that I don't do is I don't like attach emotions to food. Like I don't think like foods are bad and foods are good. Like I don't do that. But if you are trying to watch your sugar intake, it is a good option because it's definitely a better choice, I would say, than a Snickers bar <laughs> or a piece of cheesecake or something like that. But you know, if you want the cheesecake, sometimes you gotta eat the cheesecake too. So anyway, I'll have a link in my description box below, but I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye, I gotta go get ready for work. See you guys later.